Me? No. Not for me. Daughter's going as a big old spider. Big old spider. I'm going as a crabby old middle aged man. Last time I did dress up, it was uh, to play Jesus in a um, uh, Christmas musical. And let me tell you, my rendition of Jesus made old women weep. I have a picture somewhere. Nailed it. <laughs> it was funny. I wasn't offensive. It was funny. Jesus would laugh. Granny Panty Peel. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was this real powerful musical number at the very end of the show. And I'd come out wearing this white robe. And um, then at the crescendo of the, the number, they'd start raising me up towards the ceiling and I'd do this whole holy pose thing like I was ascending to heaven. It was beautiful. Let me tell you, you ain't lived until you've been hoisted 50 feet by your crotch in front of a room full of people. It was, it was a big show. It was a big show. It was called The Living Christmas Tree. It was down in uh, Florida. And uh, they'd have this big tree set up in center stage with the choir. Um, various tiers up, up, the, up the tree. It's kind of a uh, favorite of my mom. She was in the choir. And they had a... Uh, the year before I started doing it, they had a guy that um, wore a wig. No, this was a church production. Then they had to stop it once they found kitty porn on the uh, pastor's uh, computer. I kid you not, Dolo, you should get a kick out of this. Girlfriend sent me an article earlier. A BuzzFeed writer was quite literally complaining that Harvey Weinstein didn't rape more black women. <laughs> Milo did a bit on it. Um, I don't know if you're still paying attention to Milo, but he does. He does. He just should have shut up when he was ahead of the game. <laughs> you take that edge too far, and it cuts you. He found that out the hard way. Well, he came along at just the right time, he stayed relevant just long enough to be useful, and then he screwed himself after it didn't really matter anymore. So, you know, it all worked out in the end. But he, he's fine, he landed on his feet. He'll be alright. I think he made more money self-publishing his book than he would have through Simon & Schuster, anyhow. People bought his book just to be controversial. Yeah, yeah. And that, I wish a lot more people would learn that lesson. Never apologize. Never apologize. If you say something, own it. Own it 100%. Do not apologize, because as soon as you apologize, I pounce. You apologize for something, you look weak. And that's what, that's what they're waiting for. That moment of weakness. And then they got you. Nope. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Good times, good times. That's truly an election cycle to remember.
One for the ages. That'll never happen again. They'll never allow that to happen again. Oh yeah, I mean, it's going to blow up in their faces. It has to. Um... just well a conversation we've had before it's just like back in the 90s when everybody was catering to the uh, religious right a very small very vocal minority um, and it blew up in their faces unfortunately it blew up so far the other way and now we have to take it back to center again Yeah, it's really hard to take them seriously. Um, the way they go on. It's like, a, well, Kasparian. She can't say a sentence without dropping F-bombs. And they encourage her to do this. And I, I just don't understand why they would do that. It's hurting their brand. It doesn't come off as a legitimate news source, you know what I'm saying? And that's what they're trying to portray themselves as, present themselves as. I mean, they're a joke. They're a joke. They, they they appeal to a certain edgy community, you know, that thinks that stuff is cool. But, um, you know, in all honesty, they're just, they're a joke. They don't research anything. They don't really have informed opinions about anything. It's all just opinion. Feels. It's all feels. Ask him to cite one source. Just one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you entertain. When you can't inform, you entertain. They're not they're not they never tried to inform. It was never about information for them. It was, all, it was always about pushing, pushing the the narrative. The, well, they've learned that you have to ask them to cite their sources. Okay, that's fine. If that's your if that's your argument for the, the thing, then then show me the data. Show me where it says that what you're saying is true. And uh, that's when they start hammering you with the feels, hammering you with the feels. Trump isn't really, I, to be honest, Trump isn't really all that. He's, he's no better than, no better or no worse than any other president. He has his ideas. What a lot of people forget is Trump was a Democrat for most of his life. And he even said point blank, if I ever run for president, I'm going to run as a Republican because they're stupid. And that's why it baffles me that the, the left hates Trump so much, because he's a Democrat. He's a liberal. I mean, he's more along the lines of a classic liberal. Um, you know, one that believes in working. <laughs> for a living <laughs> but then Trump's Democratic Party or Democrat Party and uh, the current Democrat Party are so far apart that it, you know they're basically Republicans and Democrats in and of themselves their idea of a Nazi is anybody to the right of extreme left <clears throat> you watch they feed on themselves too see it happening more and more um, you're not progressive enough yeah yeah I mean, the president has no real power I mean, the only power he has is the veto um, he can't make a law he can just stop one from passing and then they can just override his veto with a, a two-thirds majority so really, the president has very little power. Um, 
Congress. Is, see, everybody's bitching about Trump. It's Congress. Congress is the one who makes the laws. Congress is the one with the uh, override ability. And Congress is the one without term limits. I wasn't really pleased to see him elected. I was just pleased to see Hillary not elected. That would have been that would have been catastrophic. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Lesser of two evils. The the one the one advantage to um, him getting elected though was it made the rest of them stand up and take notice. You don't have as much power as you think you do, and uh, it can all be taken away from you in a moment's notice, providing we don't get complacent. Right, exactly. And that's where the true power lies. Those are the guys that make the laws. Those are the guys who, again, like I said, have the override ability. And it's not hard to get Republicans and Democrats to, to play ball with one another. You want to talk about pharma? Sure, we can talk about pharma. Obviously, um, and I don't want to. I don't want to come out off sounding all tinfoil hatty, um, but obviously they can cure it. But why? Why wouldn't they be able to? It did, they know exactly what what it is, where to find it. Um, they know what causes it. Why couldn't they stop it? Uh, but there's no money in that. There's no money in cures. There's money in treatments. Treatments go on and on and on. Cures are one-shot deals. But there's absolutely no reason why they can't fix it rather than treat it. Keep you dependent on the system for years. Hey, we finally kicked your cancer. Oh, look, it's back. Yeah, I mean, you're going to die anyhow. And that's, that's the big illusion that they sell. We'll keep you alive forever. Everybody dies. And the sooner you come to grips with that, the happier you'll be. And then you'll enjoy the time that you have here that much more. No, it's not nihilism. It's real. It's, it's realism. You're not immortal. Uh, nothing, nothing you can do short of keeping you alive forever on life support system um, is going to keep you alive forever. And so for them to be pimping out the idea that they can make you live forever, even though they're not actually saying that, but they're, they're creating this illusion that they long, healthy, 150, 200 years, you'll be fine. Yeah, just take this pill. I'm an optimistic, I don't, I don't want to say an optimistic nihilist because I'm not a nihilist. Nihilism, nihilism carries with it certain um, negative aspects. Um, and I'm, I'm not a negative person, I'm an incredibly positive person. But I'm also an incredibly realistic person. Um, and, and the reality of the situation is you're going to die. You're going to die. Um, that doesn't have to be a bad thing. That just means make the best of what you, what you have available. Whereas uh, nihilism is more, you're going to die, so what's the point in even trying? Um, but the point in even trying is you're a living organism. And you're a part of a... Um, community of living organisms and living organisms have a responsibility towards one another it's not religious based or anything like that it's just a responsibility as part of the whole to support the whole you're a living organism just like any other living organism on this planet you have one primary purpose and that's to create more of you part of the greater good for all of you is um making sure you don't create a burden on the others. Kind of give back more than you take. Uh, or at least balance the equation, at the very least, balance the equation. You don't want to leave with a deficit. Uh, see, that's where you start getting deeper. That's where you're getting into the humanity versus uh, thing. And I, I, I don't know. Because I'm a big fan of individual rights. Um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of if you want to be left alone, by all means, be left alone.
but I'm also a big fan of not making a burden on anybody else. Because if everybody took account, per, uh, took account for, of their own lives, if they took responsibility for their actions, if they stopped being a burden on other people, um, then everybody as a whole benefits from that. Um, and then if you have any left, you know, if you have any left over, then you give back. Um, again, for the benefit of the whole. If you have a little left over, then you help this guy out. Not, to, not necessarily to help that guy out, but simply because it's the right thing to do for the whole. Some people are going to have an excess. Some people are going to have a deficit. Somewhere in the middle, you got to find the balance. So those with the excess kind of help those with the deficit. Not by force, though. That's the thing. It can't be a, a forced thing. It has to be a by choice thing. And that's where the individuality comes in. Um, because who's to say that this person with a deficit is necessarily worth helping? Why does this per person have a de deficit? Did they make bad choices? Is their deficit a result of their bad choices? Do they deserve the help? Um, because they made bad choices. Now, let's say person B has a deficit, but it was through no fault of his own. Uh, freak accident, whatever. Whatever you want to call it. Now, which one do you help? And that's why it has to be about choice. Because um, when you take the choice away, then you're helping both of those people. The one who doesn't deserve it and the one who does deserve it. Deserve. And I, not deserve. But, you know, we're just talking about balancing equations here. Um, this person's deficit is more of a deficit because it's a self-generated deficit, whereas this person's was an accidental deficit. Um, or through no fault of their own. I disagree. I disagree. Um, I think if, if you gave people the choice... Now, of course, you're going to have the selfish pricks, and that's fine, but that's a deficit. Um, and then the deficit, you know, you have to be judged by your actions. Uh, if the person decides to be a selfish prick, and then they find themselves in a situation where they need help, where they become a deficit, they're not going to find that because the bit people with the excess are going to be too busy helping the people with the unchosen deficits. See, that's the nihilism talking. If, if you let people choose, most people won't contribute, and I strongly disagree with that. I think at the core of most people, there's a good person there. A good person who would like to help other people. But, you know, it only takes a few bad ones to change that. And then if you set up a system where you're forced to help good or good and bad equally, you know, chosen deficits versus accidental deficits. If, you're, if you create a system where you're forced to help those both sides equally, then you're going to create a system where people just stop caring about the, um, the help. You're going to create a system where abuse is more likely to happen and where people are less likely to want to contribute because they're contributing to a, a, a chosen deficit rather than an accidental deficit. And then the chosen deficit starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, whereas the accidental one starts to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Then you have an overabundance of the chosen deficits, much like we have now with our welfare state. There are enough jobs for people out there if they choose to go look for them. They're choosing not to go look for them. Um, so now we have to pay for those people through taxes, um, and that number is growing greater and greater and greater every year. Well, that's where it starts, um, reverse nihilist. I, I, yeah, that other word's too hard to say. That's where it starts, and it has to start at that core. The core, uh, the core of any society is the family unit, um, the home, the parents, the children, the nuclear family. That's the core of any society, and then from there you spread out from the neighborhood, the community, the town, the city, the state, the country, the world. Um, but you have to have that core. And if you have a strong core, then the, the core will have an excess that they can then share with the neighbors. Assuming they're worthy.
Because <laughs> it's not about the game, it's about the conversation. <laughs>